ناشا الكتيب second year PhD student at Telecom Paris which is a member of the doctoral school Institut Polytechnique de Paris it is known as a leading education and research institution in France and internationally I belong to the academic team of the research chair CETROASAS which stands for Chair Connected Cars and Cybersecurity in close cooperation with our partners Renault, Thales, Nokia, Wavestone and Valeo the share focuses on new cybersecurity issues linked to the emergence of new mobility patterns. Let me start by answering the questions. What are we trying to solve and how can we do this? Actually, nowadays modern cars are controlled by complex distributed computer systems. And these complex uh, distributed computer systems comprise millions and millions of lines of code. They execute these uh, millions of lines of codes on heterogeneous processors. And these heterogeneous processors are connected uh, by internal networks. Actually, while this structure has offered significant benefits to the efficiency, to the cost, and to the safety of the car, it has also created the opportunity for new attacks. So, Car security research, as you can see, it's very interesting, not for just the automotive uh, experts, but also for a general audience, because most people have cars and most people understand the inherent dangers of an attacker gaining control of their vehicle. Automotive research security has actually started long time ago, like in 2010 when researchers from the University of California and the University of San Diego have shown that if they can inject messages into the vehicle network of the car, they can actually make some modifications on the functionalities of the car and make physical changes. So, uh, such as uh, controlling the display on the speedometer, killing the engine, or even affecting the braking. In fact, Modern automobiles provide several physical interfaces that either uh, directly or indirectly access the car's internal networks. So we can see them in this slide. We have different physical interfaces. We have the onboard diagnosis port, or it's called the OBD port. We have the disk where we put the CD. We have the USB port, we have the Bluetooth, we have the fire pressure, the Wi-Fi, the cellular networks such as the 4G, 5G that will be deployed for connecting the car to other cars and to uh, like the different elements of the infrastructures, like the antennas of the 4G and the 5G cellular networks. And you can see now in this video uh, how I have access to NVACL metric just by connecting my laptop directly to the most significant interface of the car, which is called onboard diagnosis. And after uh, connecting this laptop to the OBD, I have uh, gained full access to compromise the full range of automotive uh, um, systems. Like you can see, I can do a lot of attacks on the NVACL network of the car and it's really dangerous. Attacks also can be performed indirectly, like not just directly, like not just how I did them. In fact, a lot of research groups have shown that they could remotely perform these cyber attacks without any physical connection. Actually, this can be done just by getting code execution on different physical interfaces of the car, um, such as the MP3 parser of the radio, the Bluetooth stack, and through the telematics unit and other ways. You can see in the slide, uh, like in, during 2015, a proof on what I have just mentioned, like we have the two attackers, Miller and Valasek, which have clearly demonstrated that remote uh, car hacking of the Jeep Cherokee 2014 is actually uh, doable. Like they have succeeded in remotely performing a wide range of physical actions through their laptop. And they have done this wherever in the United States. So this remote attack, as you can see, was groundbreaking in the field of automotive cybersecurity.
And with this motivation, my research work concerns leveraging data science and artificial intelligence for building the intrusion detection system. So this intrusion detection system will be able to detect the different automotive cyber attacks on the in-vehicle network. And in this case, and uh, by building this intrusion detection system, we'll be able to make the vehicle more robust, more secure, and for sure we are guaranteeing our personal safety. But you may wonder what is the in-vehicle network and how can we protect it? Actually, modern automobiles are controlled by heterogeneous combination of digital components. Uh, these digital components oversee a broad range of functionalities, including the drivetrain, the brakes, the lighting, and the entertainment. It is estimated actually that a modern luxury vehicle will include up to 70 distinct ECUs, and each ECU will contain tens of millions of lines of codes. We can see in the slide that these different electrical component units or ECU are interconnected by common wire networks, such as the CAN, the controller area network, the flex ray, most, and automotive ethernet, which is deployed recently. We see that this interconnection permits complex safety and convenience features, such as the pre-tensioning of seat belts when a crash is predicted or uh, automatically varying the radio volume as a function of speed, like better driving experience. However, such advances do not come without a cost because these protocols have vulnerabilities and these vulnerabilities will allow the external attackers to hack the car. So to detect these attacks and to guarantee our personal safety when driving, we have created an intrusion detection system for the in-vehicle network. Now, in the area of network intrusion detection, data science and artificial intelligence have emerged as great solutions for building smarter intrusion detection systems. And uh, they will allow the prediction and the detection of suspicious network activities such as phishing, such as uh, unauthorized intrusions. And this can be done in any network just by analyzing the network traffic. We can see in the slide how an intrusion detection system can be one of the most common components of every network security infrastructure, especially in our application regarding automotive networks. So leveraging the, re the recent development uh, of artificial intelligence techniques such as uh, deep learning can be expected to bring significant benefits on improving the existing intrusion detection systems. So in order to detect uh, the known and the unknown attacks on the car, we must apply artificial intelligence into the intrusion detection system. So in order to create this intrusion detection system, we needed a dataset that will contain both the normal and the abnormal traffic of network packets. And these network packets must represent the different type of attacks on the vehicle. However, due to the lack of automotive datasets reflecting nowadays technologies, my supervisors and I have built our own synthetic dataset with intrusions and without intrusions. And to detect these cyber attacks, we have used deep learning, which is based uh, on artificial neural networks and representation learning. Fortunately, our system has got a large accuracy of 99%, low false alarm and misdetection rates. In addition, it has a small inference time per input, which enables it to be deployed for real-time intrusion detection. Artificial intelligence and data science are actually transforming many industry and not just the automotive industry. They are considered to be professions of the decade. In fact, studying artificial intelligence and data science will actually open a world of opportunities. At a basic level, you'll better understand the systems and the tools that you usually interact with on a daily basis. And if you stick with the subject and study more, you can help create cutting-edge artificial intelligence uh, applications, 
like the Google self-driving car or the IBM Watson, or even you can protect connected cars against cyber attacks like me. Gladly, I was able to create this performant intrusion detection system by my hard work, the great mentoring of my supervisors, but also with the support of my colleagues at Lab LTCE, and especially during this pandemic. In fact, working at Telecom Paris gives you the chance to meet international colleagues with great educational backgrounds, with diverse expertise, and different viewpoints. If you are willing to apply for a PhD, I really encourage you to be part of LTCE, the lab that prepares you to become a leader in research and in the industry of the future. And thank you.